Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining. I know it's Monday night, so a lot of us were working all day or we were busy all day. So excited that you can be here to watch and learn uh, something new on Monday night. So as you know, we are making paper crowns and they're so fun. I've, I've been making them and bringing them to people for birthdays or bachelorette parties and they just kind of go nuts. It's something that once you start making them or you make one, you like, oh, I know how to make this all the time now. It's really easy but it's something that you make for them. It makes them feel special and it's pretty inexpensive. You know, our sheets of paper don't cost too much. And once you have a knife or a good pair of scissors and a cutting mat, you're pretty much off to the races. So with that being said, um, I'm gonna go through the pink crown and the gold crown, that little pointy one. And then I'll have questions at the end. So if something comes up to you, maybe wait and see if I answer it or if I don't put it in the chat and Carrie, our moderator host, will read them to me and we'll go back and forth. So welcome to add stuff in as you think of it or wait till the end, whatever works for you. And then just a note that we are all lovely adults here. We're all at different levels of learning. So just be kind to one another in the chat. And in general, this is a free class for adults that we get to enjoy and that I get to teach and I'm really excited too. So just a note on that. Anyway, um, if you've got your camera on, that's great. Excited to see you. Um, I don't care if you walk off screen or do whatever, just be mindful that everyone else may be able to see you. And that's it. So if you're crafting along with me, get your supplies. Um, otherwise, I'm gonna go through the materials that we will use for this. First things first are these sweet, sweet glue dots. Um, I've actually used these in professional uses for sending out like influencers kits and stuff like that. And back in the days when I worked for beauty and they are, those kind of stickums, when I pull them off, you'll be able to see, but they're fantastic and they're permanent adhesive. So that's how we're going to use to keep our pa paper together and really make it stick because uh, Mr. Scotch tape can't, can't do it like these can. And we don't want our crowns falling off when they're being worn. The next is a utility knife. There's a couple of different sizes of these, but I'm going to go through uh, how to use them and how to break a blade, switch a blade, something important to do. And I think sometimes they're a little scary to people, but they're a really excellent tool. A pencil, you know them. These teeny, teeny scissors, they're sharp and they're made for cutting sticky materials, which has really come in handy for me. So not a necessary to have, but a really nice to have if you have that in your budget. It was a material listed in class. And then a good old pair of scissor scissors. Sweet, sweet, clear ruler. These you can't cut with because we're gonna be cutting with a metal blade, but I use them for measuring, they're really handy. It's just a 12 inch plastic gridded ruler. And being able to see on top of what you're doing when you're making marks is a dream. So I use that in tandem with my metal ruler that's got a cork back. So when you cut things like this, you need something with some grip because when you cut just with metal, cut metal on metal, it can slide and, you know, you can imagine that bad things happen. So we're gonna start with the gold crown because that's easy. It's gonna be our little gateway drug into using a utility blade if you haven't before. You can also use an X-Acto knife instead of utility blade. The thing is with the utility blades is that they cut through thicker things. So we've got some thick paper today. So an X-Acto knife could do it, but I just prefer to use a utility for these. So you notice also when you signed up for this class, there is no template. So I'm gonna teach how to make this, these crowns like I made them. So you can see how it's built. You hopefully can kind of riff off of the, the shapes and make whatever you want. But I'm gonna do the ones that you saw online today. So first things first, we take off that nasty sticker. And I just like to peel, start with the corner and peel away 45 degrees and just tell it nice things and hope our adhesive comes off well. And it did, yay. All right, we're parked over. We're swimming in, we're swimming now y'all. Okay, so we're gonna cut a strip and then a taller strip for the front and then an extender. So we're gonna kind of make our strips and then we'll put them together around. So first things first, we're gonna do a 12. We know that this square is 12 by 12 inches. Same with our pink paper. So that helps us. So the back half of the crown, 
my ruler is two inches. 12 by 12. My ruler is bending, love that for me. And if you don't have your a clear gridded with you, I always like to be careful. And so I look here and see it's we're at 12 by 12 and two. And then I kind of just go along and make sure we have 12, two, I'd make a notch and go on to the end, like 12 and two, and then I connect the line. So if you didn't have that clear ruler, you could do the same thing again here. Imagining that we're now connecting those three little notches we made. So it's the same way to do it. Cutting, great. Some blades have a knob and it's lefty loosey, righty tighty to tighten this part of the blade. For this particular blade and brand, it just locks in place. So that makes our lives easy. This one also is something where you can, well, it's like the other ones where you push down, you can see these little score lines, that's where the breaks are. That's where the next blade happens again. So when you're ready to change the blade, you can literally press down. You have to be careful, put it away from you. You know, maybe don't have your favorite kid near you when you do this, but you go ahead and just really press down and snap the blade off. Now, some of these come with, put this back in as I pull this out. Is it not gonna open for me? Are we camera shy? No, we got it. All right, cool. What's cool about this blade is it comes with a little place for you to actually insert your blade and break it. So it gives you another point. Not all blades do this and that's totally fine. We mean camera shy, buddy? Oh, cool. Awesome, he doesn't want to break for me. That's cool. All right, we'll try that later. <laughs> so normally it shouldn't take that much effort and not be an epic fail, but you know, technology. That was silly, we'll try that again later. Anyway, back to this piece here. Just pressing down and pushing against the ruler so you get a nice square cut. If we were cutting with this plastic, like we were, our metal knife would cut into the plastic and start taking away this clean edge, which is one of the good things about buying a ruler and plastic slides we could cut into ourselves. So always use the metal when you're cutting. So we've got our 12 by two inch strip and then we're gonna do a 12 by four inch. So we can use it like the, this way and just notch four. So if you don't have the big grid ruler, that's totally fine. So now I'm gonna connect the dots. We should have a nice rectangle. And if you don't feel like using a utility blade, you can do this with scissors. I think it's just a nice tool to have. And as we start cutting out the triangles, it's um, just a little easier. You get a little more control. It's nice to know how to use it. Great success. The 12 by four, the 12 by two. And I'll write this on the back just as we're here. And then we're gonna cut an extender, but I'll do that later once we get the crown more together in the crown shape. So how these are placed together, we're using these glue dots, but we're also using paper joinery. So we're gonna make some notches and put them together and then use our glue dots to reinforce the notches. So we're not depending on both. We're not depending on one or the other, excuse me. So with my back half, we're gonna make a one inch tall, notch. So since I know that these are one inch squares, 
I'm gonna draw a line here. That's one inch up and one inch away from the edge. This is one inch away from the edge and one inch vertical. I'm gonna do the same line on the other side though. So it's, can you see that? Yes. One inch away from the edge and one inch vertical. So these are gonna be our notches. So now we're going to cut them. All right, great success. We've got notches, we're on our way. We're gonna do the same thing on the front part, but we're gonna cut out more of our crown shape first. We're gonna get it looking fancy. This is 12 by four, so we know this is 12. Today is all about math, so I hope you're feeling very mathematically inclined. If not, uh, you're doing great and math is your friend, so. So six is the middle of 12, right? We know this. So I'm gonna make a nice notch, a little mark. And we know that the part it's gonna to connect to is two inches. So we need to make sure this is the front part of our crown, this is the back part. We need to make sure that we don't cut down too low. So we're gonna mark two inches across. right here okay so now we're going to start to build out our fun crown shapes so we're going to plot points kind of like geometry or algebra or really a lot of the maths where we're using our x and y axis and then we're going to draw a point and then we're going to connect the lines so we are building our own template it is magical so we've got our four inches we've got our two inches we're gonna make another point here. And we're gonna make it two and a half inches from each side. So I'm just gonna mark it at the top, even though we're gonna be a little bit lower. So we're prodding across this way. It's two and a half away from the edge. And it's gonna be three and a half. Oh, no, it looks like I have it at three and a quarter in my notes over here. Three and a quarter up from the bottom. So if I had a normal ruler, we would still be doing the same thing. We'd be measuring. Okay, that's two and a half away from this edge, and that's three and a quarter. Cool, three and a quarter from this edge. So here's where we're going to draw a point to. We're gonna do the same thing on the same side because our crown is symmetrical. So two and a half over here. Oops, come down here, looks good. That's our notch. And then three and a half, three, excuse me, three and a quarter. On this side. I'll make a little fix. That's gonna be where I'm lining to. We can check it on the other side. That's 75. This is four. Cool. You know that. So we've got our points here. We've got our edges here. And we know we'll draw a little dashed line. So we know where we're cutting. We're, we're not going to cut below this line. Make a little dash just for us so we can see. We're not going to cut anything below this line, but we've now started to got, we know, excuse me, we now start to have places where we're going to point up and down. Well, we can't below, cut below this line, right? And we've got here. So now we're going to add our notches so we don't cut anything into that space. We're going to do the same part. We want these notches to connect to each other. So we have one on this side, one on that side. We're gonna do the same thing. So we're gonna make a little one by one. So one up away, one from one side, one from the other, one inch. 
line, little squiggly line. We're just doing the same thing. And we're gonna cut, we're gonna draw a line on this side. This is two inches up, one inch over. So it's the same thing. And we're gonna cut that notch here. So our line is actually <laughs> okay, so four inches away from the edge, we're gonna start connecting these points up here. Four inches away from the edge, let's get the ruler in the right direction. We're gonna make a mark along that two inch kind of baseline we started building. So now we can connect these lines here. We're gonna do it on the other side. Four inches away from this edge, and two inches up from the bottom. So we've got these lines. Are these big enough to see? I hope so. So now we've got our point of the crown and we can take our ruler and draw and connect these dots. And that's what we're gonna cut. We're gonna connect. I'm going to connect this to this one on our little baseline. Follow, follow my logic on this. We're going to connect this to this little peak. Looking regal, looking royal. And then we know that this is where our little notch situation is. So I don't want to go too far into it, but I can go right to it. So one inch away from the edge, our notch is gonna be here. So just to give us a little extra room, we can cut to it and down, or we can cut a little bit shy, but just for it being symmetrical, let's connect these lines right to where our notches start. So one inch is away, one inch away from the edge. We've got something royal starting to play place. One inch from the edge, one inch from the edge, and then we've got our peaks. And then we're just gonna cut them out. So, metal ruler. This. Nothing nice clean cut. And with Things like this, when things get into a corner, that's why I really like using a utility blade because sometimes when you use scissors and you go into a tight corner like that, you can cut a little too far or your angle doesn't come in quite right and you get kind of a messy corner. So that's one of the nice things about using a utility blade and a metal ruler. Some things do just come out cleaner. Sometimes it takes a little longer, but depending on what you're doing, you do want that nice edge. And with something where they come in together at a point, I'm not cutting toward our crown because this is crown. This is the back of our crown. So I don't want action that really to cut into this part. I'd rather cut away into the part that we're gonna not use our waist. So I'm cutting away from the crown. So I'm just starting at this corner. Pushing down, but not too hard, but really pushing down on my ruler because I don't want my ruler to fly away. That would be a problem. And do the same thing. Now on this corner, I'm just gonna push, excuse me, cut away. Clean scrap. Maybe cut this one. So I'm gonna again cut away. Yes. 
All right. That's a clean edge, but you know what? It kind of bothers me, so I'm gonna go back in. I think there's a little bit of a mark. I'm not sure if you can see it on our friend's Zoom. But if you make a mistake, that's okay. You can just go back in with your blade. And I'm actually gonna freehand it. He's doing this for a long time. I've got a pretty straight, straight hand, steady hand. There we go, now we have a nice clean edge. It's beginning to look fancy. Line it up, make sure I know where I'm going to start. Yeah, just push down on your ruler and your knife. Honestly, about the same amount of pressure I'm pushing my ruler down as my knife because I really don't want my guide to move. When you're cutting, I'm, I'm pushing this a little in front of me so you can see, but you always have the most control and have more power if you cut you're kind of on top of what you're cutting because if you're over here, well, you know, your strength is far away from your core. So it's a little more difficult. So, um, you know, I like to stand and cut also that helps. Um, if, if that's not something that's comfortable for you, uh, don't do it, but you, you'll kind of want to get on top of what you're cutting. Just a little bit too. We've got our notches and we're going to cut these and put them together. As you feel like it before you start um, gluing things together, if you want to print something out or maybe cut out a heart or a star, that could be really fun. I just wanted to keep it simple so it applied to the most people, but that, that could be something that would be fun where you do the same thing. We build out our shape and then your star, your heart, or even oh, honestly, I would just maybe draw something and then use my X-Acto blade to cut that out carefully. The thing is with letters, it would be fun, but if you have like a C, but if, you're, uh, if your initial is a P, then that inside part of the P, you'll lose it. So it depends on someone's letters. So maybe a symbol could be easier, but it's always easy to just go with the classic shape. Okay, so we've got these two pieces and all we do is just notch them together. So I'm taking these little flaps, I know they're just tucking together. See that on the other side. We just got some notches. Now, this is small. I'm with you. It is a small size hat. We're going to make an extender so it fits adult people. But relatively quickly, we have a sweet, sweet custom crown, albeit for smaller size heads. So we're going to cut an extender and then we're going to glue this together with our glue dots. So it can still come apart, but we're just gonna glue together some of these notches so these pieces don't fly up and flop around and it's just more secure. All right, so we're here, we're crushing it. We're gonna get back to our other original sheet of paper. We're gonna cut a 12 by six 
strip and that's going to be just like this and we're going to add it as an extender so we can add length and we're going to add a couple notches so depending on your person's head size we'll be able to notch it so they can fit it and they can feel happy because sometimes it's hard guessing someone's head size you don't know um so we're going to do that to cover our bases and if you get there and you find out that the size is perfect great you can just take off that little extender put it in your purse and you're living life this works with any type of paper this is just old laminated plastic paper so it's glitter but it's got a sweet plastic covering so it does not get glitter everywhere which yeah uh, we like the look but it really can be a mess but you can use any other type of paper in that collection this shimmer paper is really lovely and it's got enough thickness that it'll stand up on its own but something like your printer paper it's not that much thicker than it but something like your printer paper it will kind of flop over so getting uh one of these type of sheets will serve you well for your crown so back to our extender 12 by 6 rectangle. I'm going to double check because that's what we do. And again, if you don't have the grid ruler, you don't feel like it, again, we're just measuring out 6 up to bottom. And then the same notch. one inch away one inch from the top one inch from the side one inch down and the same so if i pull this apart for a second here it's the same thing but shorter i wouldn't write this on yours because you will be able to see it when they wear it but for the sake of everyone seeing I'm going to write it down but you could write them little notes you can do whatever you want this is your this is your project and what will actually add one more notch so this one is different than the others in that well we can be able to notch it here or here so this is now at five inches and at six inches. So, excuse me, four and five inches away from the edge. Four and five. So, depending the length, it would be a four inch extender or a six. Or, y'all know what I'm saying. <laughs> the piece is six inches and we could either add four or five inches. There we go. Cut that out and throw it on real quick, glue it up, and we are done with this crown and moving on to the fringe, which is super fun, but you don't really need an exacto knife for. So that's why we started with this one. Split out, and we got plenty of extra scrap paper, fun scraps. I like to keep my scraps too. These shapes are interesting. This could be fun gift tags. You know, sometimes it's nice to just keep your scraps in a bag. And if you need a little something, you have it. Okay, great. These are nice clean cuts. And let's say I didn't press down hard enough and it, it wasn't all the way through. What I would do is just go back, line my ruler up again. You have to be careful about lining it up, but I would just go back and cut through again. That's no big deal. It's going to be a cleaner edge if you go back with the knife versus, oh, sorry. If you go back with the knife versus trying to rip it, it's, yeah. So don't worry about that. If it's a score and not a cut, that's totally fine. It happens. Okay. We've got the back of her crown. Hey, amazing moderator, Carrie, if I'm talking away and my my work is not in frame, please holler at me. 
All good. You look good. Thank you so much. So we've got, we're just redoing what we just did with the notches. And now I'm going to take my, oh, took them out already. The glue dots. These come on a line, on a, on a roll. And I'm going to cut them off the roll and then put them down on my surface because if you try and pull them off, they become a sticky tangled mess and you have a ball that you can't do anything with. <laughs> so um, I'm going to lift this little notch flap. I'm gonna burnish it down and then I'm gonna peel the edge off. Hopefully you can see me do this on camera. Okay, I'm gonna push this down. I'm gonna burnish it down hard. Burnish is just a nice way of saying a really firm, application. Plenty of pressure. And then I'm going to take the paper off, which is going to reveal its sticky other side. And I'm going to take it off like I take off stickers. I'm going to grab it by a 45 degree angle and just really politely pull away. All right. Are you able to see that my glue dot, the brain is glued up, but this is actually a strip is applied. So now, hmm, good thing I checked before I glued it down. It looks like this notch wasn't all the way in. Okay, great. So I wanna make sure my notches match up because at first this one was up here and I would have glued it down and then been sad. So now they're perfectly lined up. I'm gonna use my mat, and I'm gonna press it down. Okay. This thing really well. Depending on how much you like glue dots and glue, you can totally put another one on this side. Up to you. So we know if we do this and we glue that together, we won't be able to add our extender. So we're not gonna glue dot on this end, but we are going to test that our extender works. Hooray. And let's say, I just know for sure, this is an adult sized head <laughs> that it's going on. I'm gonna wager a bet that this is gonna fit them. Then I'll do the same thing. Cut. here, lift my flap, apply. And if the glue dots are just too much commitment, then don't do that, that's totally fine. The only thing uh, is that when it's pulled into a circle, these little notches kind of want to go a little crisscross if they're not glued together. So you can see above, these guys are sitting really pretty and flush against the curve. This one's doing pretty well too. I kind of manhandled this one. And then this one is our extender notch. Let me tuck this into here. They're all playing pretty nicely, but because they're not glue dotted down, I've got some movement and it's a little wiggly. So that's the only thing, but otherwise we have a very sturdy adult crown. My hair is up, so it, it fits a little big, but it just depends on your person. And then you have, you can quickly be like, oh, let me fix this for you in two seconds. Shorten the little extender and then there you have it. But I think, it, you know, they look great on camera. They're super fun and they just make people happy. And it's something you made for them, which is always nice dress up, bachelorette parties, birthday parties, bachelor parties. Oh, we lost the light. The other uh, good pro about not totally gluing all your ends so it's in a circle. If you're traveling, which a lot of people do for these occasions, you can put it flat and then when you get there, assemble it. So that's another nice feature. But that's our first crown.
we match it up because uh, that's who I am. All right, let's go, fam. Um, the other one is this fringe bonanza. It's really silly and joyful. I love texture. I like repetition, right? We're repeating the same elements. So we've got three layers here and the paper we just cut and pulled. So it's just really silly and hopefully joyful and playful. So we're gonna make that one as well. And this one, you can tell, I didn't blue dot together so we could talk and play. We're gonna build this again the same way. No template, but there's no plotting points with this one. It's really easy. We're cutting strips and cutting fringe and laminating our layers together. So if you can look from the top view, we've got the same situation. We've got long strips, got an extender, and then we've got smaller strips on top with all the fringe goodness. So if you're having fun and you wanna keep making fringy layers as you build this with me, that sounds amazing. If you wanna make your layers, your fringe deeper or make them even taller, do that. This is just a good jumping off point that you really can riff on this. All right, crown two, Revenge of the Crowns. Fancy magic paper, same thing, goodbye sticker. And then just pulling in a 45, kind of pull, kind of low to the material as well. I'm not pulling up, if that makes sense. I'm pulling par more parallel with the surface or a 45. I'm not pulling up. All right. Branch pile. I can't believe my knife didn't break. That was hilarious. If I didn't have my other one too far away, I would grab it and demonstrate. Okay, pink crown. We're gonna cut two two by 12 strips. That's gonna make this long part. As you can see here in the back, it's notched together. Where is everything? Where is life? So this, again, we're starting with the base of our crown. We know this is 12 by 12. I know my ruler is 12 by two. So for the speed of us making crowns together on video, I'm gonna just line up and cut here quickly. You know what, I think this is not reading. I'm gonna grab a black pencil so you can see my marks. Carrie, can you see that on Zoom? Not so much. Okay, cool. I'll be right back. And if oh, you guys have any questions, um, I was just going to remind everyone if they have any questions to put it in the chat. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Thanks, everyone. So I'm using a pencil when I made these. Um, you know, we're just over video here with the resolution. So you can use pencil when you're home and I'm sure you'll be able to see it. But so y'all can see what I'm doing. I grab just a Prisma very thin colored pencil, which these are some of my favorite things to draw with. Okay, so we've got a 12 by 12, excuse me, 12 by two. And we're gonna cut another one. those. Again, if you do not have or feel like using a knife, you don't have to. You can totally do scissors. I'm going to do one with a blade, one without. We'll kind of see. Okay. This is nice clean cuts with the knife. The thing is with scissors is, you know, every tool has its pros and cons. I just find that even with the steadiest of hands, you don't get the exact crispest of lines like you do with a blade. So we're gonna compare. And if it doesn't bother you, then that's great. 
So they're very similar. It's a very minute difference, but you know, you can see where I did a little oops wiggle here. We're gonna make this into fringe. It's a birthday crown. It just, again, it depends on your personal choice and preference. And if you even see a difference, we love options. So these are a little base shorties. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna do the little notch magic, same formula. A line that we're gonna cut and form into notches, one inch away from the edge, one inch tall, and on the same exact side, on the opposite side, one inch, one inch away from our short edge, and one inch tall. And we're gonna do the same on this. So it's also gonna be one on the left, one on the right. Great success. I'm gonna cut this. Let's see. This is my scissors one, so I'll just mark an S on it, so I know. I know did a bleed. I was just check my cuts while I have everything together to make sure they are fully cut, not scored, because you know when you're into assembly, it's just kind of easier to. Keep cutting while you're cutting rather than go back and grab your stuff. Awesome. This paper is thinner and it is more hard to pick up. Now that we're doing smaller details, I'm gonna grab my baby scissors. I just think they're awesome and they're like a tiny scissor because I have small hands. The right, two ways of skinning a cat, we can do this thing with scissors, with blade, really do whatever. Float your boat. There you go. One and the other, we're gonna knock it together. And this is gonna be our length part. So we can build everything and do fringe palooza or we can fringe and build. I think it's easier to get all your pieces together and then do the front details. So kind of just doing one thing at a time. So we've got our base. Now we're gonna make the front details. We know this is 12 inches width. We've just been cutting off this Height. So we're going to cut another set of strips. We're going to cut them one and a half inch tall, two inches tall, and two and a half. So that's how they're tiered. Now you can do this shorter or longer. And there's one that goes in front of this. So this crown is actually double sided. So you get a double layer of fringe action in the back as well because we're covering up our notch in the back. I'll show you. So since I'm already here, I'm gonna cut. You know what, let's make it easy. I know my, the grid on these squares are at half inch intervals. So this is one and a half inch tall. Half inch. This is gonna be two. This is gonna be two and a half. I'm gonna mark it. So this is measuring two and a half inch height. I'm gonna make a mark. You can do this with your metal ruler as well. Two and a half inches in the middle. Nice mark. And line them up. 
right, we'll get two and a half. So we'll just connect. I like to do one in the middle just in case you're you goof a little on your sides, you don't cut it and go, oh man, that was totally crooked. So having something in the middle is just a nice another point to line up with. Okay. We've got our fringe of holes on. What's going to happen? These don't need notches because these are the decorative parts on the front. We can just cut these shorties out. And we'll use scissors for one and blades for the other because we can. In the speed. I'm going to, I'm going to the blades. It's faster. Lined up. So these, this brand locks, but there are some called Ulfa that's got a little knob that's threaded. So it's lefty loosey, righty tighty to lock it. So I still have the habit of using that knife where I want to continuously lock. So just depending, be mindful of what brand your knife is because you can be cutting if you don't lock it or if it doesn't self-lock, you can start to cut and then your blade will disappear within your uh, little cavity here and you'll be like, what just happened? I'm really pressing into my ruler. All right. I'm also cutting toward me because I have a better, I can, I have more control, but I'm not cutting towards myself, toward my belly. I am still trying to cut away from me, but still in my own direction, just because it's, you know, easier to have that kind of strength. And I'm doing my best to stand on top of what I'm cutting. This is paper, it's thin, but when you cut things like foam core, it's definitely just force of habit that it's good to get into to really just make sure your materials don't move on you so nothing happens. All right, we've got our sweet, sweet layers. Let's measure out fringe. So all these little fringe babies, they're all the same length and width. They're about half an inch cuts and they're a generous eighth no, quarter inch wide, well, I got chunky. Closer. For being nitpicky, it's about 3 sixteenths. Yeah, it's 3 sixteenths. Okay, so the fringe is 3 sixteenths, but I just like to eyeball an eighth and it turned into about a fat eighth. Now this is where it depends on you, but I'm gonna measure half an inch down. So I eyeballed this when I was cutting the fringe, but it doesn't matter because these are gonna be covered. So you could write anything you want on the back side of this, like we're doing here. So you can draw a guideline for you to cut to. So this is the back of our front little fringe piece. And then this is gonna be my cut to line. Now, Again, it's just personal preference. Do you want to um, go through and you know, this is about 3 sixteenths. You could do it an eighth. It's really up to you. Do you want to go through and mark every one or do you want to eyeball it? Personally, I like to eyeball it, but you can give yourself a couple guides or you can go through and mark every one. You know, as you keep doing it, it gets faster and faster when you don't have a light glaring in your face. There we go. So you can keep doing that and have a guide and then get used to it. But you know, this is really fun. 
I think once you start cutting a couple, you'll kind of get used to the spacing. So I use these baby scissors. They're not baby scissors. They're the fantastic sharp small scissors, but you could easily also use a knife. I think for something like this, the little scissors are faster. So I'm just gonna cut, cut, cut. And it's okay if it's not, you know, totally perfect. Once you measure out a couple, you can kind of start and then, you know, we'll pull them apart and make them all stand out as we get them all done and assembled. But it's kind of just meditative to just kind of not worry about it and just cut. You know, they're about all the same length. They're looking like fringe. They're getting a little chunky as I get in the middle. I did that intentionally because having 3 16th rather than closer to a quarter is a pain in the butt to measure. So you can kind of see what that looks like. A little thinner, a little thicker. I'm gonna get a, I've got a scrap over here and I'm gonna show you what, if you wanna make your fringe a little longer. Got a thirsty puppy in the background. Double checking that this isn't one of my cut pieces. No, these are this, this, this. And I only need a little bit of this for my extender. So I'll use this little test chunk to show. This is 75 inch, excuse me, 0.75, so three quarters of an inch deep fringe. So it's just a different depth of your fringe. Not for the fun of, you know, you can pick. Right, so these are a little longer, these are a little shorter, whatever you want to do, because we already cut these strips. All right, back to the fringe zone. But once you get these cut, something you can kind of sit down and, oops, sorry, buddy. You do. Speeding through a bit just since we're all here together. I'll finish one and do a couple, but then I'll assemble it. Because this part, y'all got. Great fringe. Okay, very silly. This is our first part. I'm gonna wait till we assemble them all and then we'll use our fingers and pull open the little pieces and make them stand out. I'm just gonna do a couple on these two and I'm gonna glue up a non-finished crown. But again, it's the same for these two. So this is our first strip, that's one and a half. Tall, that's this first part. This is our second one. And I'm gonna draw a line. That's about half an inch away from the edge. I'm gonna be just my little cut guy, and I'll just do this in the middle just for the sake of demonstration. Baby fringe. Oh my gosh, we're about to hit time. Okay, well, now let me quickly assemble. I didn't realize how, how quickly things went. So this is our original crown. This is our first one. We made the, first, the two 12 by two pieces and we notched them together. Amazing. All you're gonna do is right this is our size i've written on we're calling the back side as you can imagine why you're going to fringe these as well so you're going to do the same thing you're going to make your line cut your fringe and then use your glued dots to notch the middle part together let me get this out of our way okay 
So you've notched them together, you've used the glue dots, you're gonna just flip it over. You're gonna find the center. These are 12 inches as we know, six is in the center. And you're just gonna measure from the edge What's six inches? I'm just gonna make a little knock, knock just before it so that I know where to glue dot it onto. So imagine this guy has our fringe. Fringe. We're gonna use our glue dots and put it on one edge and one edge. Then we're gonna take our shorter one, same thing, little glue dot action. And this one on top. So now we've got All it needs to be fringed is our sweet little crown. And then I did the same thing with the extender that we just made in that gold crown. And I fringed it as well. So I just cut another 12 by six. This one is 12 by four as I was learning, but this was a 12 by six extender. And then that's it. Then we have a magical fringe crown. Awesome. Does anyone have any questions? I know that was, a little bit of a two projects in one class, but I wanted to show ways to have options and not using a template does take time, but I think it allows for more creative freedom on your end. So I definitely wanted to break down how I make things and hopefully that's kind of gives you jumping off points. Yeah, we do have one question for you, Lauren. Um, yeah. Regina is wanting to know if um, you use a measuring tape to judge the size of the person's head when you're um, before you create the crown. You know, I didn't, I, um, I just went, I know I have a smaller head for an adult, but everyone is so different to judge. So I just went with the extender. And when I brought it to two adult, different female adults, friends, they ended up using the extender. And that's why I just thought it's good to have it and not, um, need it or not glue it down. So it's just kind of my bonus piece. So, cause you just kind of never know. Um, and also, I didn't want to measure their head and then bring them something that's a surprise because then it kind of ruins the surprise. You're like, uh, no reason, but I need to measure your head. Yeah, no. Um, so I did not. But if you have a sneaky way of doing that, I would love to hear about it. Oh, thank you. Awesome. Thank you all so much. I hope you learned. I hope you had fun. Um, I, I just, you know, I'm excited if y'all bring people's crowns and the joy brings them. I have some other classes coming up. I will be teaching how to curl ribbon, wedding season, all the gift season. It's an evergreen thing that's great to know. So how to curl ribbon, uh, that's gonna be super fun, makes anything a gift. And then the only paid class I'm doing is a crystal quartz sun catcher. So we're gonna do a little bit of basic macrame techniques, a little bit of uh, beadwork, but it's very simple and it's super fun. Um, you know, we're going to talk about ref refraction and how light kind of reacts to things to make visual interest. And then everything else I have after that is Halloween. So I'm doing a Hocus Pocus banner. I'm doing holographic ghosts. I have a bat pinata coming up and a giant, giant spider web. Yeah, I can show the two crowns. So we've got this gold one that we did, the really simple one, but you can totally customize with the number of points you want to do. And then this little fringe guy, where it's the same principle. We're just building these bands, notching them together. And then this part, we just layered those little strips we put on front for extra fringe action. The only thing I think I, I talked about but didn't say was for the fringe, once I cut it and assembled it, then I kind of pulled these little pieces apart just so you kind of notice them more and you know it catches the light more. I think it has more interest. That's it on my end. Thank you all so much. I really appreciate it. All right, have a great night, everyone.